In today's lesson, we're going to talk about hormone testing and how to optimize your inner natural pharmacy. And as you can see, I have a special guest with us today, Katrine Valinsky, who is the head of our testing department. And what we're going to talk about today is some things that you need to know if you're going to go to hormone te te testing. So welcome, Katrine, to the set. Thank you, Wade, for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here. And you know, you've been such a, a, a big help for me all, all these years and teaching me about the things that I need to learn from my own body. So I really appreciate that. And we want to share with you with the whole Bioptimizer family. Um, just to get started, what, what's the, when, it, when or what type of person tends to get a hormone test? Well, usually you look at women over 35 years old because that's when we start having a lot of changes in our bodies and then we reach menopause. That becomes critical to know what's going on in our bodies. For men, it's also usually around that age, 35 to 40 and onwards going, just to keep tabs on what's going on with testosterone, to keep our vitality levels up and sexual powers. <laughs> so all of those things are needed for, you know, for our bodies to be vital and radiant. And that's why hormone testing becomes really important in those ages because we see a decline usually naturally of hormone, hormone function in that time. And that's why it keeps um, keeping tabs on those type of things is very important so we can kind of prevent certain things that are usually associated with things like menopause, <laughs> you know? Right. And um, some other individuals that might want to be looking at hormone testing is also younger women as well who want to get pregnant and might have some issues around that area or uh, younger girls who might have um, problems with menstrual cycle. Same as uh, some younger guys as well who might have some problems in puberty. Uh, that's when you would usually clinically look at hormone testing. And I understand we're seeing a lot more of that nowadays with all the toxins in the world and that sort of stuff. We're seeing a lot more people that are requiring hormone testing. Is that right? Well, absolutely. Uh, we're seeing a lot of issues with conception. Uh, there are a lot of young couples that are not able to conceive naturally, and that's when they start trying to look at their hormone function and trying to figure out what is going on inside their bodies. And of course, that is connected, like you said, with toxicity in the world, with our lifestyle, which is pretty sentimentary, and also with changes in mutations in our enzymatic functions that are usually um, govern certain functions in the, inside of the body and especially in hormone cycles. Wow. So um, is there a variety of tests that people can do? Is there different options or like do they go to an MD? And what, what's, what's going well, on in hormone there is, there is a variety of options you can uh, look at. Uh, if you go to a regular MD, usually they will require blood analysis, which is kind of, um, uh, for me, it's a step backwards in a way. You can't really prevent at that point. You're already in a place where some certain huge chemical changes had happened in the body and you're looking at the situation you have to deal right now with. Uh, if you're looking at urine testing or uh, saliva testing, you can usually prevent certain things. You can see things happening um, before they're actually going to happen. So you can do some preventative measures and uh, maybe change this to diet, maybe taking some supplementations. And uh, it's, it's good to do those uh, first uh, before you do the blood testing. And uh, usually the urine testing, you will have a 24-hour test. That's a more accurate one, and it's kind of the industry standard within alternative doctors and functional medicine doctors or naturopathic doctors. Uh, those people that are usually looking to prevent things, not usually uh, dealing with acute issues. Um, so 24-hour test of urine usually collected during the 24 hours. You have a better look at what's going on within the body, especially with your um, adrenals that are changing, your cortisol levels are changing during the day. So it's important for us to look at those to see where the problems are happening. And the saliva testing, uh, it's usually less expensive but less accurate, but it's still a really good measure of seeing what's going on uh, with the body, where the serum metabolites are appearing, how, what are the levels? So it's still a good option for people to do. So if I heard you correct, what you're saying is um, <clears throat> urine testing is probably the best of the best, and then maybe saliva testing and then blood test would be third from your... And, and well, you know, right it, they, they can be complementary to each other too. <laughs> uh, okay. the, the urine test is probably the most important one for me as a practitioner to look at, to see what's going on with the person. Uh, some of the parameters in the blood work, um, we usually... Uh, go um, now take in the same time as a urine test just to complement and to see how they correlate to each other. So it's not one or the other, but if I had to choose, I would probably choose the urine testing. Okay, great. So um, when I get one of these tests, let's say, so whether I went to my ND or went through one of the bio-optimizer recognized uh, facilities, um, what am I going to see as a person? Like, what am I going to learn about myself? 
um, what do you mean? What kind of performance you have? <laughs> yeah, exactly. like what's going to happen? What, what, like, well, what do I you know, see? First, first of all, you will learn about different types of hormones, you know, what they do into your body, uh, how they co co uh, correlate to each other, how they connect to each other, how um, they um, have, what kind of effect they have on your sleep, what kind of effect they have on your, you know, wakeful uh, energy levels. And, you know, those type of things, you'll have deeper um, look at how your body actually works on like hour to hour, day to day kind of basis and why you might have in certain issues that you are having, you know, like waking up, not being rested or having insomnia or having some, uh, you know, problems with emotional uh, ranges. You know, you might be getting upset or, you know, too uh, sad or angry or anything like that. That's not usually your type of demeanor, but that could be related to actually hormonal function. Wow, that's so amazing. Now, once you've had a hormone testing, let's say you, you learn about the inner re relation of these hormones. I know I've learned so much from you. Then from that, can, can you change this with some of the, the dietary practices and nutrition programs and that sort of stuff? Do you find that it's changing? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's amazing what can happen to a person who has gone, undergone a whole package of testing, not just hormone testing, but um, all, all the testing and they have done some kind of changes to their diet or to their lifestyle. Lifestyle is even sometimes more important than their diet. You know, things like looking at um, blue screen at night, which is a lot of people losing, using their iPhones, their iPads, their computers late at night. And this is a blue light that we are looking at. And when we're seeing this, our body thinks it's a daytime. And in the daytime, we have different types of uh, melatonin and different levels of it being um, <clears throat> pr produced than at nighttime. So when you're looking at blue light at night, the body thinks it's a daylight. So it starts downregulating the melatonin cycle, which helps you sleep or regenerate and things like that. So even changing such a thing as you know, not looking at your computer at night or having special orange glasses that can help you filter that light out can make a huge difference on your sleep and on your melatonin cycle. Things like, um, um, let's say, uh, extra block or you know the DMs, you can add that supplement to a woman's uh, diet, and you will see uh, a lot of times less in menstrual uh, problems during the cycle or uh, um, shorter cycles, maybe even um, increase in um, um, conception, not conce conception, <laughs> fertility. <laughs> fertility. That's yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> that's right. a good word. Exactly. Fertility. <laughs> you know, increase in fertility. You know, things like that. So you can actually see the differences. I've had clients who overnight, you know, not overnight, but like after months of cleansing and changing the diet and, uh, and their lifestyle, were able to get rid of problems that had been plugging them then since they were like 15, 16 year old. And, and these women that were 40 years old and they've been suffering with, you know, horrible migraines during a, a certain type of, um, du during certain time of the cycle, horrible time and not being able to function. So you can definitely see a change with just a few tweaks and uh, some changes to lifestyle. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, hormone testing is really state of the art. And just quickly, um, how often should a person get testing and how long does it usually see results from dietary changes, let's say? Uh, well, it depends obviously on the person, <laughs> you know. I always say that inability to follow instructions is probably the thing that can uh, stop you from gaining the results the most. So people that can uh, work with a good practitioner, figure out what's going on, make some changes, can see changes right away in their uh, health within like probably a month or two months. Uh, people who might be a little bit slower at implementing or maybe have other you know, problems with metabolism, it might take a little bit longer. So it really depends on the person because we are all different. We have all different by by individual uh, biochemistry, and it's important to just work at your pace, work with a, a good practitioner, you know, figure out a good um, road to your, you know, health, and just make your steps. So sometimes it will um, take three months to uh, make another test. Sometimes you would want to see a test in a month. It depends what's going on with the person and right. how severe the problems are. You know, things like that that will usually will take into consideration when we are looking to retesting. But usually, I would say at least once a year, uh, when you are uh, at the age for women 35 and up, that's when you start wanting to you know, keep an eye on certain things, on your estrogen, on your melatonin, things like that. And for men too, usually a little bit older, maybe 40 years and up, that's when you start really wanting to uh, check on your testosterone levels on DHEA and you know, key components that will make your hormonal health much better. Well, that's awesome. Wow. We certainly learned a lot about hormones today. So thank you so much, Katrine. And for those of you that have been watching this, I'd like to um, encourage you to get some hormone testing. And of course, 
You can refer back to the site if you'd like to get testing from our team or Katrine. I should be happy to help you out on that. It's a very select group, I will say that, to, you know, to, to leverage her, but we do have those opportunities for you. But don't underestimate the power of hormone testing because it's one of those things that you can set a benchmark over time if you do this regularly and consistently, consistency, uh, consistently, excuse me, you'll start to see how you're able to develop a model and more importantly, you'll find out those changes. And I'll tell you, as you get older, it does change, but you can turn back that clock with a little bit of information and following some of the protocols of, and, and procedures that we advise or suggest here in the Bioptimizer program. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Go out and get a hormone test. Try the one that you like for your best and we'll see you on the next lesson.